Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Christensen Knife Works Maverick S. This particular version is the frame lock version sporting the Zerka tie accents. I've actually got another one here that's all black, same thing. There is of course also the liner lock version, which would be micarta with zirconium accents, including the pivot collar, backspacer, and pocket clip. These knives are made by Riot, uh, so very, very good, uh, high quality manufacturing. At the time of this video, they may be sold out, but I'll still link the listing down below so you guys can check. I don't know if they plan to make more, and I don't know when you're watching this, so. Uh, feel free to check out the links right down in the description. Thanks so much to Sierra underscore bound on Instagram for loaning these knives to me for review. They will go back to him. Uh, thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me. Link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm going to move the black one out of the way. We're going to bring it back. It's just this one is a little bit easier to see with this background. A couple of size comparisons here up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. This knife is definitely closer to the size of the Ontario Rat Model 2. And you know what would help is if we actually measured it. Sometimes I forget to do that. Overall length of the Maverick S coming in. It, they're listed at 7 inches, but it's absolutely 100% 7 and an eighth. The blade length is definitely 3 and an eighth. So it's absolutely over 3 inches. Just make sure you be careful about that if you live in an area where that's a problem. And then it has a 3 inch cutting edge. So anyways, back to the size comparisons. How about up against the Spyderco? PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3, which there it is, right there. Definitely closer to the size of the Para 3. Last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. All right. How's the action? It's pretty good. It's pretty much what you'd expect from Riat. These guys are brand new, so they're a little bit tight. Uh, I think after a while they'll probably loosen up. Perhaps maybe Scott needs to put, sorry, the camera's shaking all over the place there. Perhaps Scott should put some 10 weight on there. In fact, Scott, I'd be happy to do that for you but, uh, before I send him back. The action, the detent is tuned perfectly. And as far as like the consistency inside the pivot, it's tight, but that's generally reouts when they're new, they're tight, then they kind of break in. Anybody who is you know, regularly purchased knives that are manufactured by Riot will be able to attest that that's usually the case, right? Um, but yeah, a little bit tight, not exactly falling shut, but shaking shut, just a little bit of encouragement. The detent is tuned, I'm uh, trying to get a, re a left-handed reverse flick to drive my point home because I am right-handed. The detent is tuned properly and it is consistently smooth. I see no issue with the action whatsoever. Um, it's also very easy to disengage because of the area where, like, where the choil is. It's not really, a, it's not a finger choil at all. It's a sharpening choil, but you can see there, it'll catch. If you want to do just a one-handed deployment and disengagement, it'll catch right on your thumb there. Uh, carry profile, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it is a little bit thicker, but the scales are contoured, which in my opinion is a bonus. Let's go ahead and do length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, really, it's not going to be a difficult object for most people to carry, even in titanium. The um, the micarta one will absolutely weigh less, not just because it's micarta, but because it's also a liner lock, which means you really get some weight reduction there. Even the titanium version, though, as far as, you know, it's geometry, it's really not going to be that cumbersome in the pocket. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh it on that note. So there will be a difference between this and the micarta one. Let's go ahead and look inside. Is there weight reduction? Yes, there is a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna guess three. No, yeah, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess 3.85 ounces. Come on! Oh, that's close. 3.75. 3.75 ounces. Not bad, really. The micarta one will weigh quite a bit less. I would guess something like three to three and a quarter. Um, so there you go. Much better ratios probably on the micarta one, but not bad for the full titanium. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness. Sorry for the noise getting my calipers out, which always seem to hide under a bunch of debris on my desk. Uh, blade stock thickness coming in at 117 thousand, so definitely not thick at all. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get all my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Let's go ahead and 
get a look at the pivot there. That is going to be a T8 along with the body screws. And I think even, yeah, the pocket clip and then the steel lock bar. So everything is T8, which is wonderful. Uh, minimal hardware, two on each side. Really great. Uh, nice, uh, nice job with that. This should not be difficult to take apart at all. Is that it? Okay, let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. Boy, uh, I know it's not it's not popping the way it should on on camera because of the black background, but this this all black one is freaking awesome. Um, Timascus or I'm sorry, Zerkatai uh, studs, uh, Zerkatai pivot collar, a nice big fat. Uh, Zerkatai pivot collar so we can actually see it and then a nice Zerkatai clip and backspacer that looks so good on the black one if I was going to do this which any I don't think I really have the option anymore um I, I had the option through Crane's Keller a little bit a while back but I don't know if, there, if I have that option anymore I probably would have picked up the black one the the satin one looks good I'm not the biggest fan of the satin finish I really wish it was tumbled I always say that right I'm gonna say it here now Black one is freaking awesome. Uh, this is a good looking knife. It is definitely not a, like, there's always going to be that group of people who scream, that's a copy of the Kabaka Gaga. Like, yeah, okay, well, every knife is a copy of, it's like, it's like paying homage to something, right? No knife owns the Warncliffe blade shape. It's like when people say, and I make fun of this all the time, when, when there's a knife that looks like the bug out and people scream copy, bug out copy, that's ridiculous because the bug out is the most, common knife profile ever and they can't they cannot in in any way claim the generic profile of the drop point blade or the the generic profile of the handle which is pretty much just knife handle as far as the dictionary is concerned same way with this this is not really a specific it's like it's not a it's not a unique blade shape it's not a unique handle shape it's just a good looking knife right and the execution here is good so to me, it doesn't look like they were trying to come up with anything incredibly unique and like be the first to ever come up with this pro. No, not at all, right? But their execution of this profile, which we have seen before, is very good. Uh, as far as the ergonomics go, again, I'm gonna move the black one because this one pops on camera better. You can actually get a full four finger grip on this guy, which I appreciate. It's reasonably comfortable. Thankfully, the pocket clip is done with sense and uh, not with Let's leave it at, it was done, it was done well. The pocket clip was done well. I was about to come down on some other company, but let's just stick to this. Um, but yeah, the pocket clip was done well, and there's not an aggressive goose bill at the end. It's also not an aggressive length, right? So while it does go halfway through the handle, the shape of the pocket clip means that you're going to be pretty comfortable. Also, the chamfering at the edges, very nice. Slight contouring on the scales, which is also nice. Uh, I like that this looks very plain. Some knives I'm more or less like, eh, right? It's very plain. The accents on of the pivot collar, that is like, you know, an appropriate amount of busyness. Sometimes I look at pivot collars and I'm like, wow, cool. It's Zerkatai, but you made it like, you know, a millimeter. <laughs> I can't see it. This pivot collar is huge. So you actually get to enjoy the fact that it is, in this case, Zerkatai. Or if you were looking at the Micarta and liner lock version, you would appreciate that it's, it is zirconium. Well, you would know that as the purchaser. You might, as somebody else, you might assume it's titanium or just darkened metal. But yeah, uh, it looks good and I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I think it would have looked really cool if they had done some type of you know, milling pattern on here, but it doesn't necessarily need it because the pivot collar is providing, you know, a little bit of embellishment to make up for the otherwise very boring canvas, right? So this looks good. I like it. I think I personally would have preferred some jimping up here, but it's not hurting anything that it's not there. Um, the uh, show side scale is not milled any shorter than the the rear side, like the, the frame lock area, but they do add little scallops on both sides. So you can still approach it kind of from the side instead of pinching your finger into 90 degree angle walls, which is nobody ever likes to do. So that's nice. I really appreciate that. The, the thumb stud is a little tiny bit in the uh, cutting path. It's maybe, you know, an, a little more than an eighth of an inch. I don't think it's that big of a deal. If you're going to cut straight down, you might bump into it, but most of us don't cut straight, uh, straight down. Even, you know, when we're doing things like bringing down cardboard, we cut slightly at an angle, right? Or like this. I mean, sometimes it, I guess it depends on which angle you're cutting at, but 
the uh, thumb stud is not out here. It's not gonna be that, that big of a deal. You might run into it a little bit, but what are you gonna do? The thumb stud is a really nice shape. It's not a pointy volcano or Madonna top. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't like those because they hurt. These are nice, right? These, uh, they're, they're very easy to interact with. They're very comfortable and there's, you know, it creates for a nice snappy action. And, you know, if you're like me and you're a couch ninja, then you're going to sit around and flip this over and over and over again while you're watching whatever it is you're watching. And uh, you're not going to get worn out or your finger's not going to start to hurt after five to ten deployments. So I appreciate that. We have a flat that carries out. The blade shape does look nice, by the way, and it is hollow ground and gets so oh, oh, thin. Oh, boy, look at this. Woo, man. That gets thin there at the edge. Uh, yeah, it's a slicing machine. We also have a Warncliffe blade shape. Yes, I said Warncliffe blade shape police. Come at me. I said Warncliffe. That's what, it, that's what I'm going to call this. The Warncliffe blade shape will be fantastic for day-to-day -day utility. In my case, right, as somebody who does not make knives, does not professionally sharpen knives, does not professionally heat treat knives, and doesn't really have all that much experience, despite running a YouTube channel about knives, does not really have all that much definitive experience when it comes to cutting things, sharpening knives, blah, blah, blah. I'm just a regular dude who talks a lot and has a lot of knives and has touched a lot of knives. Um, this will do really well. Generic day-to-day -day stuff, like somebody like me. Opening packages, making simple draw cuts, things like that. Slicing paper, rope, cardboard, rubber, etc. It'll do a good job. I wish it was tumbled, but it's not. There's a nice swedge up here. I kind of like that the flat is not up higher. I kind of like it here because we get to appreciate this swedge up here, and I think it looks nice. Um, you know, don't do anything stupid with your with your blade, and uh, I think this will hold up. It's made out of M390, which is actually complemented by that incredibly thin um, hollow grind. So that's cool. It says CK, Christensen Knife Works on the front, and that's it. Great. Minimal billboarding, so I don't have really much of an issue there. Oh no, guys, they forgot the lanyard hole. Nah! Moving on here, the pocket clip, like I said, is a beautiful shape. They've knocked down these corners so it's not pointy. Uh, carry depth. It's about medium. You got a little bit of the butt sticking up out of your pocket, but not much, and it clears the tip like where the blade actually starts to go into the frame. So really all you're seeing is the frame and the top of the clip, and that's nice. Because of the width of the clip, we get to enjoy the fact that in this case it is made out of zirconium timascus or black timascus or zircotai if it's from Chad Nichols. I honestly don't know which one it is. It's all the same stuff. Really nice. Because of the swoop, the shallow swoop, it means it's going to uh, generally be a one-handed experience slipping it in and out of your pocket. Um, unless you have really, really thick pocket seams. Um, it's also a very smooth surface, so it shouldn't be hard. Like, you're not going to fray up your pants uh, putting it in and out of there all the time. There's a stop pin located right back here. A little bit of shouldering. That's nice. Um, we do have an over-travel stop. Uh, lock bar insert that's doubling as the over-travel stop, so that's nice. Lock up. Oh, what does it say right here? Does it say something? No, that was my imagination. Lock up. Completely and totally solid. Honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less from Riot. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Nice and consistent, and we have a nice clicky detent with perfect centering. This is a little bit different than the Micarta one. The Micarta one is an, uh, it's a liner lock, right? Which truthfully, I would have been, I would have been over the moon for the titanium version had they done that. Had they done a recessed titanium liner lock, and yes, it is. That, that Micarta variant is a titanium liner lock, not a seal liner lock. It is a titanium liner lock that has a lock bar insert as far as I know. I think that's what I saw in the pictures. It doesn't really need it, but I think it's the case. The Micarta version also, for those of you looking at the price and going, oh, for Micarta, oh, uh, again, those accents are zirconium. <laughs> they did not cheap out on that on that micarta version at all titanium recess liner recess liner lock zirconium pivot collar zirconium backspacer zirconium pocket clip uh even though those are tiny parts not cheap to do they did not cheap out on those so i just want to keep that i want everybody to keep that in mind i like the frame lock version but i would have just died if this was a recessed liner lock why because it means that i don't have to worry about how much pressure i'm applying to the lock when I'm squeezing it, right? Because you're, you're actually squeezing down on the lock. On the liner lock version, you're just squeezing, squeezing down on the um, the scale so it doesn't affect the lock up at all. It also means that you don't have to worry about where these fingers are back here when you are deploying it. Now, it doesn't really seem to be much of a problem with this guy because it's a thumb stud opener, 
but still it's kind of nice to just be like, you know, feel like you can put your fingers wherever you want, but you know, legitimately it doesn't really seem to, you know, mess with it at all. But still, I would have just been like, wow, this is amazing, right? For some reason, I cannot find just a generic titanium frame lock version of this that is in the listing that is not with zirconium accents, but I can find a picture of it. Curiously, if I Google it and click on the picture of that, there, it, a picture of one exists, just like this, but instead of titanium or, or zir zirconium timascus, it's, it's just like this, but it's got zirconium accents, like the micarta ones. When I click on it, it takes me to a page that does not show it. Now, does that mean that there was one available and it's just sold out? I don't really know. Maybe it's that, or maybe there was a previous run of this. I don't know. As far as I know, the versions that existed, the, the ones that I actually saw listings for, were the two micarta variants. I think it was brown and green, something like that, with zirconium accents. Those were for 380. And then these guys here, which was titanium and zircotite accents for 480. I know that the instinct, because micarta exists on the knife in plentiful form, because it's the scales, the instinct is for people to go, oh my God, that's massively overpriced. I don't think it's massively overpriced. I think it's a tad high. The titanium ones, I think are a little bit closer. This to me, uh, it's um, 480 is, but it, I do like the, Zirkatai on there. I think something around 450 would have been like, wow, pretty good, you know? So it's not massively offensive. The micarta ones, I don't know, in the lower 300s would have been, I think, more appropriate. Maybe 340, 350. 350, be, of course, being the middle, but that's maybe max. So they feel a little bit overpriced, but I, I know I know what's going to happen. It's it's just because they have micarta scales, that, that fact right there makes people, you know, take the other factual elements of the knife and throw them out the window when they're determining price. Um, that, it really doesn't bother me that much. I mean, I own a knife in my Carta that was $1,700 and I know that I'm not paying $1,700 for the my Carta. That just happens to be part of the knife, right? Um, totally different, <laughs> totally different ballpark, but no, I don't think these are, these were bad, uh, especially considering, you know, the price of everything else that we're looking at, right? You can get a USA titanium frame lock uh, from a reputable maker, a reputable mid-tech maker or high, ultra high-end production maker for roughly four to four hundred and fifty dollars right now. So getting the same thing with some Zirkatai uh, accents, which definitely would cost you more on anything that's made in the United States, for about the same price, right? Eh, it's okay, it's all right. These are made in China though, but it's Riot, right? You're not getting like whoever from China. You're getting Riot, which, you know, they're still kind of the kings when it comes to... There's been some companies that have really impressed me with some designs, uh, but a lot of that I feel like may be the designer's input. Um, so every now and then. But as far as consistent, ultra-high quality, Riot is still king of the game when it comes to the Chinese OEMs. And honestly, their production quality is the same or better than anybody else's just regular production quality I think that I've ever handled. It takes a, a few, in a few cases, it's, it's just taken like custom makers like Brian Nadeau uh, to, to surpass, you know, what Riot is capable of doing. Um, but uh, yeah, these I think are pretty good. I like them. And I know people are always like, why do you review it so late? Uh, I mean, because I, well, I did the unboxing when they came out, right? They were still available then. But the review, no, I wanted to take my time with it. So depending on when you're watching this, it might not be available. If you watch it on the day that I upload it, probably not available. You watch it, if, you know, down the road, maybe they have more. And that link will take you to a, an available listing. But I will link it down there so that you guys can check it out if you want to. Um, but yeah, these are cool. I like them. This is a knife that... I really thought about buying and the only reason I passed is because I personally would have liked the combination of the two that were available, right? Instead of micarta, I would have gone with titanium and I would have gone with a, re but, I, but I would have preferred a recessed liner, especially in this black one here. This is so nice. I really like how that looks. That is just a, a that is just a cool pocket knife. I think that's about it. I think that's really all I can say. This is cool. I like them. 
Uh, it's gonna go in my recommended knives playlist. Feel free to check that out if you want. Thanks again to Scott for loaning these knives to me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.